You can't even do housework properly anymore. So you are no longer of any use to us. I agree. It's time to fire this housekeeper, right? Great! I can finally say goodbye to this old hag. My husband and mother-in-law were shouting at me in a wheelchair, and my daughter cursed at me without any sign of care. In front of me are the three of them, looking down at me with a wry smile. Are they waiting for my reaction? If you're going to go that far, I won't show any mercy either. You will see. I will make you regret it. My name is Anna Taylor, 30 years old. I'm a freelance writer working from home and a housewife. I got married two years ago and live with my husband, daughter, and mother-in-law. My husband, Jared, is five years older than me. I met him three years ago through a dating app I started with a friend. Jared and I both like watching movies. We had a lot in common, and we exchanged numbers right away. He was a mature man with a smart attitude. I was attracted to him, and we started dating. Six months later, he proposed to me, and we decided on our marriage in no time. However, there was one problem we had to deal with in order to get married. That was the existence of Maya. Maya and I are not related. She is a child between Jared and his ex-wife, and she was already 10 years old when we got married. She is now a junior high school student. I still feel a big gap between us. I can understand why it's difficult to think of me as her mother, but still she hates me so much. Until recently, she has ignored me even when I try to talk to her. Now she makes fun of me without a doubt. Just the other day, while I was preparing dinner, Maya came home after finishing her after-school activities. I called out to her to ask her about her day, but she didn't respond. I was thinking of it as her ignoring me as usual, when she threw something at my back. I looked at what had fallen, and saw that it was a bag containing Maya's gym clothes. She glared at me as I picked it up. I will use those tomorrow, so wash them quickly. I spoke to Maya with a puzzled look on my face. I'm pretty sure you had another set of gym clothes, right? Even if I wash them today, they won't be dry by tomorrow. Can you take the other set with you? Huh? Why are you telling me what to do? I said wash them. Even if I start washing it now, it won't dry by tomorrow, that's why. Shut up! I told you to do it, so shut up and do it! You're useless! If it's not ready by tomorrow morning, I will tell Dad and Grandma. Good luck with that! She ran up the stairs and went to her room. She would not take anything I said to her. I had no choice but to take her gym clothes to the laundromat. While I was putting them in the dryer, I was stuck by an indescribable feeling of emptiness. I had married Jared knowing that she would never be attached to me, but I never imagined that I would suffer so much. Maya, when are you going to treat me normally? Even if I can't be your mother, I want to at least have a normal conversation with you. Well, I guess I shouldn't rush it. I have to work harder. Someday, we will understand each other. I told myself that and Barry kept my spirits up. I was the one who decided to get married. I must not give up in the middle of the process. I spent every day with that thought in my mind. Actually, besides Maya, I have another problem. That is my mother-in-law. Like Maya, my mother-in-law also seems to be unhappy with me. She has disliked me since the beginning of our marriage. On this day, when I returned home from the laundromat, my mother-in-law was waiting for me at the entrance. Hey, Anna! Where the hell have you been? Where's the dinner? I'm sorry. The side dish is ready, so I will prepare the rest right away. Where have you been wandering around until this hour? You weren't out playing around, were you? No, I wasn't. Maya asked me to take her gym clothes to the laundromat. Well, are you trying to say that it was Maya's fault? You really like to blame others, don't you? I didn't mean it that way. Just get the food ready. Jared will be home soon. Maya is probably hungry too. Yes, ma'am. I will get it ready right away. 
Whenever my mother-in-law doesn't like something even a little bit, she blames me. She would blame me for anything like this. When I was a newlywed, this attitude made me feel sorry for myself. Compared to before, things are a little better now. However, the damage is still done. What hurt me the most was being compared to my husband's ex-wife. Her name was Michelle, apparently. My mother-in-law compares me to his ex-wife at every opportunity and made comments as if I were inferior. Michelle could have done it better. Michelle's cooking was delicious. She was a kind and caring wife. I wish Michelle would come back, etc. According to Jared, his ex-wife's affair led to their divorce. I know that my mother-in-law loves Jared very much, but why does she praise the ex-wife who caused the divorce so much? If someone hurt her beloved son, I would not be surprised if she disliked them. However, I don't have the luxury of worrying about such things. How will I get around in this house from now on? How will I deal with my mother-in-law and Maya? I have to think about these things carefully and act accordingly every day. It is very difficult and burdensome. Even so, I was determined to do my best for the sake of my beloved husband. I did not complain to my husband about my mother-in-law or daughter-in-law. I mainly asked him how we can get along with each other. On this day, I explained a series of events and asked him before going to bed, Jared, are you listening to me? Today, I was scolded by your mother and Maya again. I'm listening, I'm listening. I always tell you not to worry about that. I've told you, just leave them alone since Maya is a teenager and my mom is just like that sometimes. That's not going to happen. We are going to live together from now on. How can we live together and get along? Jared, you should think about that a little too. Without taking his eyes off the phone, he replied in an uninterested tone, so I questioned him firmly. Please, I'm serious here. Asking for advice. I can understand they don't like me, but your mother compares me to Michelle, you know. What? Michelle? She says that Michelle was a better wife than me. She's always telling me that. You should put yourself in my shoes a little bit. I really want to have a good relationship with my mother-in-law. Well, even if you say so, I'm sure it will turn out the way it's supposed to. Time will tell. That's just nonsense. Nonsense? I'm very serious. All you have to do is make an effort to be liked by my mother and Maya. Think about it and just do your best. My husband patted me on the shoulder, said goodnight, and pulled the covers over him. I wondered if he was really asleep or if he was just pretending. No matter how much I called out to him, he never responded. The next day, while I was preparing breakfast, Maya came down from her room. I hand her the gym clothes, neatly folded and bagged, as she prepares for school. Here you go, Maya. This is the gym clothes you asked me for yesterday. Maya, are you listening to me? These are from yesterday. Shut up! I can hear you! I'm ignoring you on purpose, don't you understand? Ignore me? You could at least talk to me a little bit. What? You want me to say thank you or something? Huh? Maya sighed heavily and took the gym clothes from my hands. Then she said in an irritated tone, You're so annoying every time. You're acting like you're my mother. You shouldn't have married dad in the first place. Oh, Maya, that's too much. So annoying. Why do you make me so irritated from the morning? You're really making me sick. She didn't touch the breakfast I had prepared, but ate the bread my mother-in-law had bought for herself. Then, she thanked her grandma for the food and went off to school. I went to the door to see her off, but of course, I didn't even get a reply. I had no choice. I should eat the breakfast she left. But when I went to the living room, I found that the dishes that should have been there were gone. The dishes I had made had been dumped in the sink. What is this? Why? Then I heard a small giggle from behind me. There was my mother-in-law with a smile on her face. No way! Did you do this? 
Yes, because it looked so bad. Maya didn't seem to want it, so I threw it away for her. How can you be so terrible? Why did you do this? Terrible? It's your fault that you can only cook such bad food. It's all your fault. Why? No matter what I said back, my mother-in-law paid back double with her words. She kept attacking me one-sidedly. On top of it all off, she followed me to the grocery store. A few hours later, the worst happened to me. I was on my way home after finishing the shopping ordered by my mother-in-law. That was when I was involved in an accident. I was taken to the hospital by ambulance, but my right leg was left paralyzed. It became difficult for me to walk by myself. The doctor told me that I would have to live in a wheelchair for a while. Although my life was not in serious condition, I was hospitalized for a few days. The hospital must have contacted my family. Soon after, my husband, mother-in-law, and daughter-in-law came to visit me in my hospital room. I was sitting in my wheelchair, and all of them were lined up in front of me. Did they come to see me because they were worried? I was delighted and thanked them. All of you are here. Thank you so much for coming. Is your leg going to heal? My husband asked anxiously. I shook my head and answered without breaking my smile. The doctor said it might be better than it is now, but that it would be difficult for it to heal completely. It would be a little while before I can walk on my own. I see. Then I guess I don't have a choice. A choice? Thank you for everything, Anna. What, Jared? My husband looks down at me and gives a nasty smile. I was puzzled, not understanding what he meant by thank you. My husband, perhaps sensing something, started talking. Well, it was a short time, but I'm glad I married you. You did the housework without complaining. You also gave us a lot of money to live on. What are you talking about? Their mood had clearly changed. The corners of their mouth are up, but I sense something frightening. It was that kind of expression. When I shrank in front of them, my husband, mother-in-law, and Maya, in that order, opened their mouths. You can't even do housework properly anymore, so you're no longer of any use to us. I agree. It's time to fire this housekeeper, right? Great. I can finally say goodbye to this old hag. My husband and mother-in-law were shouting at me in a wheelchair, and my daughter cursed at me without any sign of care. I was so shocked that my body stiffened and my legs trembled. My husband, looking down at me, finally gave me his final words. I married you and kept our marriage all so that you could take care of the house. In other words, you are no longer of any use to me now that you are in a wheelchair. Oh no, does that mean... Divorce is what it is. Thank you for being my housekeeper all this time. As soon as you get out of the hospital, take your stuff and get out of our house. My husband took the divorce papers out of his bag and slammed them down in front of me. His part already filled in. Without waiting for my reply, they left the hospital room. The door to the room closed and the sound of their footsteps and laughter faded away. At that moment, my heart was already filled with anger toward them. He never liked me from the beginning. He married me and used me to take care of his daughter. This is unforgivable. All three of them. I will never forgive them. I signed the divorce papers right then and there and called my mother. I explained the situation and asked her to submit the signed divorce papers to the city office. A few days later, I was safely discharged from the hospital and headed for my parents' house. I asked my parents to tell my in-laws that I had filed the divorce papers and to pack up my belongings. I returned straight to my parents' house. I would never see them again. I felt somewhat relieved and decided to start a new life. Five years later, a familiar name Jared appeared on my phone. I had forgotten to block his number. I did not answer the call and deleted his information from my phone. The next day, my former family showed up at my parents' house. When they saw me, they knelt down on the ground. 
I was puzzled and wondered what was going on when Jared suddenly looked up and started. Help us! What? What do you mean so out of the blue? Please, Anna! You are the only one I can rely on! What is this about? I need you to lend us some money. Otherwise, we can't make a living. If I sum up his words, this is what it was. For a while after I left, they were living a comfortable life. But when Maya entered a private high school, their finance had become more difficult. The reason was that Maya was stealing money from the house to buy the things she wanted. Not only that, Jared's mother was also using her son's salary to indulge in beauty treatments and luxury brand goods. When their savings ran out, they began to borrow money. They were unable to repay their debts, and they were forced into a situation where they couldn't borrow any more money. The biggest issue right now was Maya's tuition. She couldn't keep up her grades, so they apparently have to pay high fees to keep her in school. They tried for a scholarship, but her grades were so bad that she is on the verge of being expelled from school. Jared rubbed his head against the ground with tears in his eyes as he finished telling me what had happened. Please, please, it's just as I said, you must have made a lot of money, so I'm begging you, please lend us some money, even if it's just a little. His mother and Maya followed as they begged together. I was deeply disgusted by them. Five years ago, they kicked me out of the house after bullying me every day. Then they come back like nothing had happened, when they're in need of money. I knew that I was still being used for their convenience. I was even getting angry. The next thing I knew, I had turned on the faucet at the front door and was spraying water at them. What the hell are you doing, you bitch? Again, all three of them screaming and yelling. Hey, what are you doing? It's so cold. Don't get carried away, you old hag. We are relying on you and begging you to help us. This is obviously not the way to ask for help. Once their true nature was exposed, I blotted out my true feelings, which I had been keeping in my heart all this time. Relying on me? I never asked you to rely on me. You used me for your own convenience and now you want me to help you out because you're in trouble? That's bullshit. How much more do you have to mock me? What? What the hell? How dare you talk to me like that? We are in so much trouble. I don't care. I don't care how much trouble you guys are in or whether you are starving to death. I don't give a shit. Rather, I'm glad you're in trouble. This is what you deserve. I will never help you in a million years. Why don't you guys just lick each other's wound and suffer for the rest of your lives? After I finished spraying water on them, I slammed the door as hard as I could. I locked the front door and physically cut them off. For a while after that, there was yapping and screaming in front of the house. A neighbor who couldn't stand to see them called the police. They were taken away by the police under the name of nuisance. The rumor that they got into trouble with the police spread throughout the neighborhood. Eventually, the story reached Jared's company. Unable to bear the side-eyeing from his colleagues, he resigned voluntarily. As a result, they were unable to pay Maya's school fees, and she was forced to drop out of high school. Now, each of the three is working to pay off their debts. They seem to be cooperating with each other, but when they meet each other, they are always blaming each other for their problems. The family relationship is deteriorating day by day. From my point of view, this is all I can hope for. I can only say that they deserved it. I, on the other hand, am still working at home while being taken care of by my parents. My leg has become much more mobile, and I'm now going to rehabilitation to make a full recovery. I cannot thank my parents enough for accepting me back after my divorce. From now on, I'm going to enjoy life to the fullest for my father, mother, and myself.